Okay. Hi, everybody. Good evening and welcome. We're so excited about our very first virtual um, AAC Supper Club meeting. And we hope everybody's got some delicious food to have and enjoy um, along with the device. My name is Kathleen Donovan, and I work at the Arlington Public Schools Parent Resource Center, along with my colleague, Emma Peral, who's also on the call tonight. And um, the Parent Resource Center, along with our amazing AAC implementation coaches and some amazing family members um, collaboratively came up with this idea. So I'm going to let them talk a little bit more about the evening. But just for those of you who might not be familiar with the Parent Resource Center, Emma and I wanted to just share a little bit about what we do. We work to support family engagement and education because we know that the more engaged you as families are, um, the better students do in school. And we do that in a variety of ways. We are available to meet individually with families to talk about questions they might have, troubleshooting, problem solving, um, connecting to wonderful school, school and community resources like our special education PTA that hopefully will share some information um, in a little bit. We have a great lending library with lots of digital materials and print materials. Um, please reach out to us if you'd like to learn more about how to borrow materials. We have a very lending or liberal lending policy. We'd love to have those books and resources in your homes and not just um, not just at the office. And now you can also borrow those digital ones. So you can have them on your devices and listen to audiobooks as well. And then finally, we coordinate a lot of parent and staff learning opportunities where we can come together to learn um, how we can support students, um, which is the work we're about and we know the work families are about. So that's a little bit about us. I imagine many of you already get our Monday messages. I'll apologize for um, cluttering up your email boxes usually late on Monday evenings. But if for some reason you are not a recipient and would like to be, you can subscribe using this QR code or just send us an email at prc at apsva.us. So I'm going to stop sharing that um, and I'll put all of this in the chat as well. Um, and then, Erin, I know you have a little agenda. I, um, I'm sure Septa might maybe wants to say a quick hello, but see who's up next. Yeah, I think um, we can just do some introductions. Um, my name is Erin Tokager. I'm one of the AAC implementation coaches for Arlington Public Schools. Um, and then Daphne, if you want to introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Daphne Denerville Davis. I am the other AAC implementation coach for um, Arlington Public Schools along as a um, speech pathologist for Arlington Public Schools as well. And then we have some SEPTA families who helped us coordinate um, tonight's event. So if you all can introduce yourselves, that'd be great. Hi everyone, my name is Jana Dressel and I have a seventh grader who is our AAC user in the house. His name is Thomas, or he goes by TJ. Um, super excited to see some familiar and new faces tonight and thrilled to be able to listen to James later. So thank you so much for coming. We hope to make this a regular thing. Hello everybody, I'm Jen Seif. I echo what Jana has said and um, LJ is a seventh grader in Arlington Public Schools, and we're excited for tonight. So thank you. I'm not sure if Cecilia is on yet, um, but maybe we'll wait and we can talk about she, Oh, there she, she is. Just Yay. joined. Yay. It is? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> like a supper club. Cool. Oh, it's not anybody that I know. This is cool. This is. LJ, this is for his friend, LJ. Uh, Cecilia, do you, can you introduce yourself to the group since you helped us put all this together today? I, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize <laughs> I came in in introductions. But um, Cecilia, this is... Good evening, everyone. This is Forte. And Forte is at kindergarten, in kindergarten at Drew. And is... Um, an AC user, uh, he uses the Accent 1400, eye gaze, um, and touch access. Good to see everyone. Good to see you all, thank you. Um, I'm gonna share my screen real quick and Daphne and I are just gonna very briefly go over um, just a couple things about AAC implementation coaching, um, which is a support that's available for APS families. 
And then we'll give James the floor. Um, so let me pull that up. So just really briefly, um, we wanted to talk about um, the guiding principles that we often talk about when we're um, coaching families who support um, AAC users at home. Um, these are our you know, direction when we're um, providing implementation strategies. And um, we have, a, we're not gonna go through each one of these for the sake of time, but um, if you're interested in learning more about these as a family um, and want some support utilizing these strategies with your um, children at home, um, that's something that Daphne and I love to do um, in working with families. And Daphne, I don't know if you wanna um, add any more to that. Um, no, I think you pretty much captured it. Um, and so this is pretty much our gu the guiding principles that we use, um, this compass. We focus on core vocabulary. We stress um, students having access to their communication devices at all time. All times, if you see them, you should see their communication device. We stress modeling and modeling without expectation. We stress connection over compliance. Um, we stress attributing meaning to all forms of communication, um, those uh, behavior and behaviorally and non-behaviorally. Um, and then we stress that wait time a lot. And, and we all often say that it's wait time for us as adults, but for our students, we say it's processing time. So a lot of times there's discomfort, but the discomfort is really for us and not necessarily our students. And so those are four of the main principles that we cover a lot in addition to um, core vocabulary, those high frequency words. Um, so in a nutshell, that's-, that's, yeah. that's And if you're interested in, in meeting with Daphne and myself for a coaching session and um, going through these and really diving deep into how you can um, utilize these at home with your AAC user, um, please reach out to us. We typically meet with families on Thursdays, but we have some flexibility. We can meet over Teams. We can meet at SciFax or at your child's school. So um, please reach out and we're more than happy to, to support. We love it. We love what we do. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing. And um, I wanted to, I see James is here. James, it's so exciting to see you in kind of in person. We've been communicating over email. Um, James Falahi, did I say that correctly? Okay, James Falahi is an AAC ambassador and he's joining us from Ann Arbor. Um, he's been using AAC since he was in preschool and currently uses Unity 144 sequence. Um, and he uses the software for communication, texting, using social media, playing fantasy sports, um, and accessing um, his educational work, including advanced math and Spanish. Um, so James, thank you so much for taking the time to join us tonight. Um, I'm gonna put myself on mute and, um, and give you the floor.
through my life using a print for hello. Through my life using a print for Romich, PRC, Accent 1400. I am excited about the opportunity to share with you tonight. I have never done anything like this before. Hopefully what I have to say will be helpful. I began preschool when I was three years old and it wasn't long before my teachers realized I was taking in all the information given. They began searching for ways that would enable me to share with them all that I was learning. I used lots of low-tech options such as simple switches and yes slash no cards. The school district loaned me my first speech generating device and suddenly I could answer questions and offer basic ideas. It was pretty exciting but the device I was given really limited what I could say. Most content needed to be entered or created before I could respond. My mom would create pages for me based on what I was learning or specific seasonal themes when I came home from school. This took a lot of time and was not sustainable. But I was able to communicate and it was such a victory. I received my first device from PRC when I was in kindergarten. My speech therapist, Tina, understood that I needed a more robust way to express my ideas and introduced my family to the Echo. She had seen a PRC device used by another student and she knew right away that it was what I needed. My mother wouldn't have to program much and the various layers of vocabulary would grow with me. My SLP knew high functioning adults using PRC devices and began the process of ordering my own. On any device from Prentrom Romich, common words are sorted into categories that open up at least one more page which contains additional words. Constant practice is the only sure way to become proficient in AAC. Honestly, I don't remember what Tina did to help me learn the language. Tina did encourage me to name my device, making it more like a family member or pet. Like a typical little boy, I named my device Burb. I did a lot of exploring with the accent on my own. Just having fun and selecting cells that looked interesting was less stressful. Tina would time me as I learned where things were to see how quickly I could write a sentence. I am competitive by nature so this really motivated me. Tina would ask me to write silly sentences just to build knowledge about where icons are located. When working on spelling words my mom would have me spell them first and then locate them on the device. Telling jokes was a favorite way for me to have fun with my accent. We played Mr. Potato Head to learn body parts and guess who to teach me to ask questions. Also, every accent comes pre-programmed with phrases for games, such as Simon Says and Uno. My little sister especially loves to play Simon Says with me. In my experience, it is essential to think of a device as not only a way to complete homework. For a long time I would use it at home but only to work on assignments. I didn't see the value in having it on always. It took me a bit to see that it also provides a chance to have complex discussions with anyone around me. Using a device to order food or pick a TV show could help motivate a student. There is a group in my town called Talk About Town and it is a group of AAC students who visit different places in town. There they use their devices to interact with each other and the people who work there. Real life use of a device makes it more fun. Since the pace of school is so fast, and I have to type out my answers, there was very little time to talk to my friends and make connections. Also, my classmates had to learn to be patient when conversing with me. My teachers would tell me ahead of time what questions they would ask me in class discussions and they would give me time to respond. I use a joystick to type and it takes me a very, very long time to answer and to type. Me. I am always looking for new ways to access my device in the hopes of finding faster ways to communicate. This reminds me that I am always learning how to better use my device. Even as I face high school graduation this spring, I am looking for new ways to access my device as I head off to college. Speed and accuracy will be so important as I begin working on my engineering degree. I guess my point is never to give up because things are always changing. Technology changes so frequently and new devices or access methods may pop up. Don't be afraid to try new things. Since kindergarten, 
I have been in all general education classes so it sometimes is an adjustment to work with students and teachers who are unfamiliar with me. I have found it incredibly important to learn how to advocate for my needs. In order to enable me to have conversations, teachers arranged quiet places for a few friends and me to eat lunch together. I am now a senior in high school and I still have a lunch group with the group of boys my kindergarten teacher set up. More guys have joined us as I've made more friends but this was so important and what started in elementary school helped to build strong connections. When I started high school and had the goal of graduation and college in mind, I realized that I had to take a world language in order to fulfill a graduation requirement. I chose Spanish since it was something my family was a little familiar with. PRC offers the Unity language in Spanish. It's called Unidad and it's set up similar to the English version. Now I switch back and forth between the two languages. I knew the English side so well that learning the Spanish was manageable. I am now in Spanish 3 and feel pretty good about all that I have learned. One thing that was helpful I think was that I started Spanish during COVID and online schooling so every lesson was done via a PowerPoint and involved so many online games. This made it easy for me to access. The vocabulary much easier. The lessons and the online games my teacher created were fun and made learning the vocabulary much easier. My SLP Tina heard about two camps specifically for device users. One was a two-day camp just 30 minutes away. This camp was sponsored by a neighboring school district. Each camper was paired with a volunteer who led us through the camp activities. While we were with our volunteers, our parents went to and participated in skill building and also a support group with the other parents. I think especially as a young boy it was helpful to know that I was not the only kid who had a communication device. As I grew up, I was able to attend a week-long overnight camp, called Camp Alec that focused on teaching campers who use devices to read and write. It was an amazing experience and helped me to realize that I could enjoy normal childhood activities such as zip lining and swimming. Also, it gave me an opportunity to work on my literary skills. The camp still takes place in Grand Rapids, Michigan every year. I absolutely love it. It is such an incredible place to be. I never imagined I would have the opportunity to attend summer camp, but this was so amazing. While I no longer need the literacy instruction, I plan to go back this summer and visit. Thank you for listening to me today. I hope something I shared will be helpful. I will add my email to the end of my PowerPoint, so please feel free to reach out if you have any additional questions. I'm always happy to help if I can. James, thank you so much for, for sharing your story. Um, I, it's exciting to hear about your camp in, in Grand Rapids. I think I want to add that to my vacation list too. Maybe I'll see you there sometime. Um, a lot of, we, we did send some questions that were submitted to you ahead of time and you covered a lot of those already. Are you open to taking any other questions from families? Well, hi, I'm James's mom. I'm Sarah. Um, so he has a little PowerPoint that he that he made with the questions and some answers. Great. So and he just give him a minute and he'll um, hopefully pop that up for you. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah, of mm -hmm. course. Really great information and great story though, James. Appreciate you sharing.
just made you a co-host, so you should be able to screen share. Um, he's almost there. Yeah. Oh no, Raj. I just I realized I didn't. I don't think I think he slipped in when we had already started. And I didn't. I didn't make him a co-host. I want to make sure you knew that. Now you are. <laughs> In what ways did you use AAC for academics? I use my device for every single aspect of my school day. Since I am not able to hold a pencil or write, my device is my outlet and the only way for me to show teachers what I know and what I need. The only exceptions would be gym class really. My device is a Prent Karomich Accent 1400 which is also a Windows computer. I use it to access email and other websites like Kami or Bookshare. What do you do with your device when you are at the pool or working out? For me, I am always with an adult that knows me very well so I use very limited sign language and gestures to get my point across when I do not have my device handy while I am swimming or somewhere and I don't have my device. For students who are more independent, I would suggest something always be nearby and accessible. There are waterproof cases for some devices but I think it would be better to have laminated sheets with the most used phrases or needs printed out. I found a great website with some awesome suggestions for this very question. HTTPS colon slash slash blog dot mycop drop dot com slash catch hyphen the hyphen wave hyphen AAC hyphen in hyphen the hyphen water. What tips do you have for school SLP slash OTS slash PTS? I would encourage them to involve everyone in the process. By this I mean don't sit in an office with the device and the user all the time but get out into the school and use the device in as many settings as possible and involve other students as well. I found that I learned best when paired with my general ed classmates. It was fun for me to share my voice with them and they were always curious about my voice and this helped them become more familiar with it so it was less of a toy and more of a computer. They could see that I was very much like them but for my disability. I had likes and dislikes and interests too. I met one of my best friends this way. One other thought, every child can learn to use AAC, but it will look different for each student. So be prepared to think outside the box. Students may need more than one option and access methods may change as the user grows. I use eye gaze as well as a joystick that acts like a mouse. What is your experience with teachers not familiar with your AAC device? I have found that some teachers who don't know me and are not familiar with my device talk over me or to me as if I do not understand what they are saying. At first they will often direct questions to my Parapro and not to me. Most teachers do not take the time to learn a lot about my device because they don't have the time to really learn it well, but I've always had really amazing Parapros who learned all about it. With their help, teachers would quickly see what I could do. If you could change one thing about your device, what would it be? The biggest drawback for me with using an AAC device is simply how long it takes to communicate. My mom always says that my hand is moving at 2 miles per hour, while my brain is moving at 100 miles per hour. 
I would love to find a way to talk faster. I used an Optima joystick from Pretorian for years before I was able to use my wheelchair joystick via Bluetooth. I also use eye gaze, but it's not something I can do all day. Q, do you have any advice for parents of AAC users? I would encourage them to find out all they can about their child's device and familiarize themselves with the language. My mom took a few classes offered through our school district to help her understand the layout of the Unity language. Uh -huh. I use a print Garomage device and there are tons of how-to videos online now that can help. Don't be afraid to ask questions and don't be intimidated by learning something new. <laughs> Put the number for tech support on speed dial because they can help answer all kinds of questions. My mom has the serial number saved on her phone too for easy reference. Get a second charger to keep in a school bag and keep one at home always. What advice do you have for new What advice do you have for new AAC users? I would say make time to explore your device in an unstructured way. I remember using the calculator just to see what crazy number I could create. Also, make it uniquely yours. All my friends' names are on my accent and so are useful sport phrases because I love to watch sports and my friends and I talk about sports at lunch all the time. How can parents help their AAC user be more independent? Make sure the device is available, but especially if you are doing fun things. It just may be the incentive needed to encourage your user. Make using the device fun by offering choices and honoring those choices if the device is used to respond. Don't insist on full sentences, but accept one or two word answers. Ordering at restaurants or ice cream parlors is a great way to be independent. Once your child sees how the device can work for them, it becomes more of a friend and less of a burden. What should parents make sure to advocate for in their AAC users' education? Constant access in school. At least one adult that works closely with your student should be trained and familiar with the device before school begins. My mom would always meet with my teacher before school started to explain my disability. Make sure your student has access to all the same learning materials as the other children even if they may look different. See if the school will install a playground core board. What support did adults provide to best help you learn to use your device at a young age? Adults encouraged me and constantly looked for new ways to make learning fun. I was given many opportunities to use my device in creative ways. I was given new access methods in the hopes of finding the best fit. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share with you today. Please reach out if you have any other questions. jfalaeamgoblu at gmail.com C-L-E-C-K-T-O-A-D-D-S-U-B-T-I-T-L-E mm -hmm. James, thank you so much for taking the time to answer all the questions um, with such detail. 
and um, really some great advice that you provided. I'm happy to share that our district does have core boards on the playground. Um, so it's good to hear that that was something that um, you found valuable as well. Um, and also thank you for sharing your contact information so that um, families can reach out to you with more questions. Um, I would love to keep in touch with you in the future um, because it's just been great getting to know you a little bit over email and um, we'd love to have you back sometime to um, speak with our district again. So thank you so much. Thank you, James. That was great. Very helpful. Well, thank you so much. This was really, um, really insightful. I've been trying to keep notes and I hope you don't mind. I will take you up on that offer to send you an email. You're welcome. Just one quick question. I don't know if you're open for questions, but I was wondering if um, at least sharing the picture with the pool stuff, um, maybe go back to that slide I didn't capture it all. Those are really good ideas. Um, thank you so much, James. Totally awesome. I don't know if it would be helpful, but maybe he could um, send the PowerPoint to Aaron and Aaron could share it. Absolutely. That's it. That would be fantastic. Yeah, we have our, our list of attendees, so I can send that out um, as soon as as soon as we have it. Thank you. I'm wondering if, uh, there would be, if we could have access to maybe the, the script from the start. Um, um, I. Uh, I wanted to just share with my husband some of what James was saying at the very beginning around starting and um, and in particular kind of taking some time to realize that um, that the AAC could be used outside of like the school context and um, you know the, the, uh, the how his mom would you know create the content in the beginning and sort of th those pieces are kind of important for our timeline. Mm -hmm. James, could you possibly send us any slides from your um, from your presentation before you went into questions? Is that something? Yeah, he can send you the whole thing. He can send you the Word doc and he can also send you the PowerPoint. Awesome. Thank you. And we do have the, this, this is currently being recorded and so um, that's another option as well. Great. Thank you again, James. Well, thank you guys. Certainly honored. Like he said, it was the first time he's ever done anything like this. And it was um, really fun for him to put this together. Well, it was, you did a great job, James. You answered all our questions and um, I got some good tips that um, I can put in my toolbox when we meet with families and staff. So thank you. This is really and hard work for, for the effort and for um, you know pre presenting all this information in such an organized, um, uh, I guess, well thought out way. I really appreciate it. And James, I cannot believe this is your first time doing something like this. You seem like an absolute mm -hmm. professional. I would have guessed that you've done plenty of them. I know if we were in person, um, we'd all be giving you probably a standing ovation, but I'd love to just <laughs> say thank you. We, we have some hands up. Okay. It's like we have Sarah's hand, up. maybe Sarah and then Blake. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, that was, I was trying to do clapping hands. My bad. <laughs> okay. And L, LJ? I remember you said you do math classes. How do you talk to a calculator? Mm -hmm. 
Let me answer. So calculator he uses, so the um, accent has a calculator on it. He also, there's a couple things that he uses um, over the years and um, he's now in calculus, but over the years, like he needed Desmos for graphing when he was in geometry. And um, is that right, James? And then he uses Equatio. At one point he used Equatio, mm -hmm. he doesn't anymore apparently. Um, and then he just has, there's an online scientific calculator that he downloaded that he uses. Um, I do know that someone within PRC developed a calculator. Um, we've never been able to get a hold of it, but I know there's one out there that's specifically made by an AAC user for AAC, for PRC devices that this guy developed that he used when he went like through high school and college in his math classes. Um, we've never been able to track it down, but I know people that have used it and, and have loved it, but pretty much everything James uses um, are things that we found just on the internet. Am I forgetting anything? No? Thank you. Sure. Daphne, I can't see. Are there any other hands up? I don't see any others um, at the moment, no. Any other questions, comments? I was going to send a comment and email just to, um, to allow James kind of time to, to, to type it up, but some of my questions are just around this notion of uh, making different tools available at the same time. Um, for, for our son, we started uh, in the very beginning when we were introduced to the concept of, of um, using, we started with this very flexible text-to-speech app and I would, we would co-create content together and he was really excited and he would was the first time he was able to um, uh, really tell me what he was thinking and I would stay up at night and kind of pre-populate food choices or activities and things like that and and, um, and that was a very uh, I guess a period where we had an explosion in communication and you would be excited to communicate um, um, but it, it the the experience with LAMP, which is what we're using at school, has been a little bit different. So I think we tried to um, switch exclusively to LAMP so we're not, I guess there were some, you know, so that we're uh, focusing on the more robust communication option. Um, but it doesn't have the same, it doesn't allow the same dynamic as, um, you know, when, when we go to restaurants, I can pull up, I can pull up the, the menu online, or I can, you know, take pictures and create, you know, the, the choice, choice board. And that really does create, that allows more for that fun, interactive experience. But we, 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 um, and our son is four. Um, so sorry, I, I, I didn't have a clear, I was going to ask just for reflections, so I thought I would save that for an email, but if, if you wanted to share any thoughts, um, that would be great. And sorry if I could start it, not to interrupt your thinking, but part of, I think the feel, the impression I get sometimes with, with LAMP is at least just the way we present it or it has been presented is it's, it's almost like we're, we're, we're interrupting the natural flow. It doesn't, it, um, I mean, he does in, engage with it, but it's not the same. Um, I, anyway, I'm not, I'm not saying anything negative about LAMP, I guess we were afraid to pursue multiple options and um, 
but you, the way you described it was very natural. And he's going to answer and then I'll jump in too when he's done. I use unity, which is different than lamp. Yeah, so we don't, I don't, we don't have a lot of experience with lamp. Um, so when he's mentioned that he used a lot of different um, methods, I think that was like in the early years when he was really figuring out what, um, what was the best method for him. But once we got hooked into this PRC device and once uh, the speech therapist in kindergarten and got him hooked up with unity I mean, it's really been easy right i mean there's i haven't had to really program anything other than like you know we entered he's when he did it basically entered his friends names he's got football teams he's you know he's um different things that are like specific just to him but as far as you know going to a restaurant within unity there's almost everything there you can think of um, program and ready to go. Um, so that's been super helpful and it's made his language growth. I think even um, it just jumped from when he was in kindergarten, preschool, and I was spending all this time, you know, making these pages and entering pictures and, um, you know, creating all these things for him. And now I just don't need to do that. Is, is Unity, it sounds like some of it is based on full, um, like sent like full concept as opposed to individual words or is it all just I mean is unity the same as the the uh, um what is it the same as the language in lamp or because yeah sorry is is this all just individual words that you have to string together to make a point or is some of it like a script or um you know, do you have to say, I love you, or is there, good night, I love you? <laughs> um, I'm happy to, to jump in a little bit. Um, Unity yeah. is made by the same developer as LAMP. It's the same company. So a lot of the symbols and the layout are very similar. Um, and from what I know about Unity, it is single words. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, James, with how yours is set up, but it's it's um, core vocabulary based with single words um, and then fringe as well. Um, I'm wondering if some of our um, parents or my colleagues who are familiar, um, the Parent Resource Center in Arlington uses PRC, but I just wanted to be sure if there were families on the call who are not familiar with the PRC that was referenced tonight, maybe. I think I found the link in the website, but I don't want to put in the wrong information. So if somebody could just clarify a little bit more about PRC, the other PRC. <laughs> Cecilia has her hand up. So James is going to answer that last question. He just finished his sentence. Thank you, James. I'm sorry. It's possible to add sentences. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> It's possible to add sentences. Mm -hmm. 
That was it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so we just to be um, mindful of, of everyone's time, we wanted to share a little bit of information about our um, parent support group. I, Cecilia, I see you, you have your hand up. Um, and we also have um, some recipe resources to share because this is our supper club. So we came to the table with some um, recipes that you can make at home um, and um, also communicate while we cook. Um, so I'm gonna let um, some of our uh, SEPTA family speak about the parent group. And then um, Kathleen, if you could share where parents can access those recipes that we have. And thank you again, James. I'll, um, we'll share real PowerPoint quick. and the email. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Have a nice night. You too. Thanks, James. Bye. Thanks Bye. again, James. So Bye, much. James. Good night. Good night. Um, I'll share real quick. Oh, and we were going to mention the same thing James mentioned. You, you can program sentences. So we do the same thing for Tay's device. Um, he has phrases. His teachers let us know sort of um, for morning meeting, for example, he has uh, good morning friends that he can say with just one, one hit, one touch. Um, so depending on what, like, I guess it's core phrases, or I don't know if that's a thing, but we kind of use core phrases that um, I've programmed into his device. So he can say those phrases just with one, one touch. So that, that is an advantage. What do you want to say, baby? Good evening. Um, good evening, everyone. He's very excited to see everybody. Um, so, we, I'm going to hand over to, to Tom, um, a wonderful uh, new parent who has agreed to take on and help out with the parent uh, support group because Forte wants to take over the conversation. So Tom, do you want to update everyone? Definitely, I will. Thanks. Thank you for the help, Forte. Thanks for Cecilia. Um, yeah, it's nice to meet you all. Um, yeah, I, I honestly have have not done much. I guess uh, Cecilia and and Jana had um, started, which many of you may know, um, a parent group for AAC users in Arlington County, which I uh, I joined recently. Um, but then I think Cecilia, as I completely understand, because she's doing a million other things <laughs> too, is like, you know said that she had had a hard time keeping up with um, keeping it organized and everything. So I, I jumped in and said, I'd be happy to help. Um, so we're going to do attempt to do a few things. Um, for those of you who are not officially signed up yet, we'd love for you to officially sign up. Um, some of you may sign up. We're going to create a just a Google group so that we can all email each other and share best practices and share questions and stay in contact. Um, and then in, in addition to these supper clubs, which, you know, thank you, Aaron and Daphne for joining these as well. I think we're going to try to have a couple other get togethers throughout the year where it might just be for social and community um, and have, you know, families get together and meet each other and share best practices um, and things. And I think the group right now is definitely evolving, but, you know, just want to share tips and support each other and support all the educators who are supporting our, our special kids. Um, as well as much as we can. So we're gonna um, pick a date, probably late March or April. And, you know, may, we're gonna vary these throughout the year, I think, but maybe this first one we'll do a weekend and do a lunch and invite families and whoever can come um, to that will be great. And I don't wanna get ahead of myself because I don't know this for sure. Maybe Aaron and Daphne know this or, or maybe you do know this this year, but I think we're gonna have another supper club sometime in May too, is that right? Okay. Um, so then, you know, a couple, two other opportunities for us to meet and get together uh, throughout the year. So thank you all and anybody else, feel free to ask questions too. Hi, 
Good evening. Is that Forte chiming back in? You are welcome, Kathleen. Oh, welcome <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll um, pass I was back over. I didn't know if, yeah, Cecilia, you had anything to add, or Aaron and Daphne wanted to take it away, or Kathleen, go ahead. I was just going to add, um, there's nothing like predetermined about this group. Like we just want to have it meet whatever needs we have and you have. And so we're going to be surveying, but like, feel free, let us know like what's going to be helpful to you. We're sort of just chiming in on what our needs are, but we just want it to meet the needs of this community. Thank you so much for reaching out. Very excited to be put in touch with everyone. Thank you, Tom and Cecilia and everyone um, for sharing that information. Um, Kathleen, do you mind talking a little bit about um, the recipes that we put together and where parents can access those? Yes, and if any of the parents or students um, have recipes to add, just send them to us by email and I'll be glad to add them. I want to introduce my husband, Rob. He came to our supper club tonight. So Hello. some of our amazing families. I'm so happy to introduce them to our wonderful community. I'm going to share my screen so you guys, I can just show you how to find um, our AAC at home page. So along with my amazing team, you know, fellow uh, colleagues and the parents on our group, last year we created a um a website called using AAC at home. So if you go to the PRC page, which is APSVA.us backslash PRC, and I'll put this link in here, and you scroll down to resources, right? The second one here is using AAC at home. So if we click here, we have, oops, sorry, I clicked too many times. Let me go back. Um, so on this page, um, first thing you can find is the opportunity to meet with the amazing Erin and Daphne to set up a complimentary coaching session, which I strongly encourage you to do. I think some of you might have already had the chance to work with Erin and Daphne, but they're doing really innovative, great work with families. So there's that. Um, information about our supper club, some videos that we've created, um, and other resources we found. And then a lot of parents and staff contributed to some resources here on how to support communication at home. So there's games and activities to reinforce joyful communication. I think um, Cecilia helped us think of that title. Information on Project Core, which probably many of you know, we're trying to spread the word to our colleagues. Um, some shared reading information, more core information and building reading and writing into everyday life. Um, lots of printable, resources and handout links here. Um, and then where's our recipes? Ah, wait. Oh my goodness. Sorry, hold on everybody. Where did I put that? I scroll past it. Oh, you know what? Here on the virtual AAC supper club. I think it's here. Yes, I'm sorry. So it, I, I hooked it in there and maybe Maybe I'll reformat it. Also, we're going to be reorganizing the website. If anybody has suggestions on how to make things easier for you all to find, just let me know. So we have information about tonight's supper club. And then right here, we have some recipes that were submitted. Um, making pizza, fresh rolls and poached shrimp. So I'll just click on this one so you can get a sense of what something looks like. Um, so we've got great directions as well as some picture symbols um, to share there. And then I think Aaron shared... Um, a long list here, cooking with core, which I think Daphne said is maybe 50 pages or so, Daphne. So there's lots of um, resources, I guess. Sorry, I don't mean to make everybody dizzy, but glossary, lots of resources in this one too. And if you have recipes you'd like to share or any other resources, just let us know. Thanks, Kathleen, for putting all that together and organizing that on your amazing website, which is such a great resource. Um, thank you everyone so much for joining us tonight. It was so good to see familiar faces. Um, it's kind of like when you were a kid and you saw your teacher out in the store wearing jeans. I feel like seeing all my, my work people in the evening from my house is like, takes me back to, to virtual days, but in a good way, in a fun way. So, um, thank you everyone for making the time and we hope to see you soon for coaching or visits or whatever else. And, um, at our next um, supper club in May. So um, thank you. And we hope to see you again soon. Have a great evening.
Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Daphne. Bye, your day. Uh, <laughs> bye friends <laughs> bye nathan <laughs> you my name, my name. okay bye guys <laughs>